everyone, welcome back to Lisa Loves Paper. And today I'm going to try to make a journal cover and a junk journal out of this. So I had an epic haul a while ago. You can watch that video. I'll try and link it here. And in that haul, I told you guys how much I loved how pretty this mailer it's from Alta New was and how I couldn't just bring myself to throw it away. And if you had any ideas to let me know, and they're a kind viewer had um, suggested making a uh, journal out of it, like a journal cover, and I think that's a great idea. And so I want to make myself a journal where I can like record art ideas I have, because I see things on reels and stuff, and I wanna be able to like write them down and stuff. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna try and do here. So I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and <laughs> you hear my buddy giggling across the room. <laughs> um, so just come along with me as I kind of figure it out. I have a few ideas, but they may or may not work. So we'll just see. So here we go. And here we are. This is literally almost six months after I recorded that first video, as you can tell by my nails and my watch. But um, I don't know if you're like me, what happens when I have a project where I don't have a clear path forward, where I don't have a plan, I sit, oh, see, that's too gummy to take apart. Um, I sit and I think and I think and I think and I think until I have some idea of what I'm going to do. And sometimes it takes a long time, clearly. And so I just decided it's time to go for it and try things. And that's what we're doing. And you will see, I'm making this up as I go along and I do mess up and it's not perfect, but that's okay. So what I was doing there, I was trying to see what part of this mailer was usable. And so the folded over end with that gummy bit was just not gonna be usable. So I decided to, to just trim it off. I was using my mat and my ruler to make sure it's straight. And here I am seeing about what size it is. I realized that edge did not cut off straight. So I'm using a X-Acto knife, sorry, craft knife to <laughs> cut that more straight. Not that it matters with what I do later, you will see. Um, and you will see a lot of thinking and tappy fingers and stuff. And so that time I was trying to figure out what am I going to do with the ends so that I can open it up. And I decided to cut these off. And what that did, the one side tore nicely. The other one, I just had to give it a little trim. These scissors that I'm using throughout, by the way, are those Tim Holtz scissors that are serrated. They worked wonderfully. More tappy fingers, more tappy fingers. What am I going to do next? Um, so here I decided, okay, let's make the holes because I knew that I wanted to bind this with rings so that it was something that I could continue to add to and change things out as I use the ideas. I told you this is where I wanted to keep arty ideas as I find them. And so that is going to be an ongoing thing, I think. So I'm going to use binder rings. And there I was doing the math to even them up. I realized that was not going to work. So I pulled out my crocodile. I think this is only the second time, maybe even the first time I've used it since I got it. I was showing you that I'm using the bigger hole, the 3 16th hole, and that I was putting it at about half inch in because I don't want my rings very far in and you'll see why later. And then it's not meant to cut this kind of material so I did have to go and clean it up, but that wasn't a huge deal. And I had to cut it from the bottom side of the cut, which is why I did some on the inside for that first set of holes and then on the back side for the second set. The inside of this was gonna be a little too floppy for a cover. I wanted something a little more sturdy. So I went to my stash of cardboard. That's that cardboard that you get whenever you order 12 by 12 papers by mail. I save it all, I'm a hoarder. Here at first I decided I was going to use my pen and that didn't work because it just moved. So I was like, fine, I'm just gonna cut it. I do not recommend cutting cardboard like this with your paper trimmer. Uh, it probably prematurely dulled my blade, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I found that I could just bend it the other way and it would snap pretty nicely and I just cleaned up the edges, not that you would end up seeing them later. And now here I'm doing the other one. So you see, I'm doing it almost a square, eight and a half by nine. Um, and honestly, once we get pages in there, the pages are going to be even narrower than that. So it does work out to more of a portrait size page once we get in there. So keep that in mind if you decide to try this yourself. Um, so here I am trying to figure out how to transfer the holes to the cardboard before I punch it. And I was trying to hold it in place and the bubble mailer is so slippery that I couldn't. It just kept sliding and so I decided to use some washi tape to temporarily, temporarily hold it in place. And that's what I did. I just marked it with a pen. And then 
I'll go ahead and punch these and then from that I use that piece as a template to then put the holes in the same spot on the other one. It was simpler that way. I'm really glad that I got to use this crocodile here. I wish that I could punch bigger holes. I'm sure there's one out there, but use what you have. Okay, so now here I am with this. And I wasn't sure, here I am thinking, thinking again, like what am I gonna do next? So here I am showing you, this was my solution for the edges of the bubble mailer. I was going to cover them with that, that was a whole big box of bias tape that you're meant to put like around the edges of blankets and stuff. And I pulled out those colors. I had inherited a ton of it. That's why I have so much. Um, and those are the colors that I liked with it. I really like that bright, bright green. It just pops a lot. And here I am showing you some binder rings that I have in my stash that are colorful. I thought that would be fun here. Unfortunately, each of them only have two of each color. And so I'm going to have to choose complementary ones. There I was showing you kind of my plan that I want the binder ring to hug the outside of the spine so that there's more space inside the book. Um, we'll see if that ends up happening. And I wanted to compare like big versus little, how much space I would have. And I ended up going with the little ones. I think that they'll hold enough, especially because I can take things out and swap things out, but we will, we'll see, you know, this is just an experiment. Um, I really like that green and the yellow with the flowers, the florals that we have there. So that is what I end up going with. Now I've decided I wanna cover the cardboard. I could have left the cardboard. I did consider just leaving the cardboard like that because I do like the look of like the cardboard and the craft. But then I decided, no, let's cover it. I don't know why. Um, I found this fabric that I've had in my stash. It's this pretty gray, kind of like a Dalmatian watercolor spot thing. And it went well with the floral on the front because it doesn't compete too much. Um, and so that's what I had been showing you. And now here I am just cutting some very rough pieces. I wanted them bigger than these because my plan was to glue them down. I'm using tacky glue here. Now, tacky glue works very well to glue fabric to cardboard, but you will see that where you have a lot of tacky glue, it can show through the fabric and you get kind of darker spots that didn't bother me but keep that in mind if that's something that would bother you the name of the game with this entire project is let's embrace the imperfection and so you had seen i brought that scraper in so i could try and mitigate the any like clumps of glue not that that helped a ton um, but then i smooth it down you'll notice that the glue because it is a wet glue it does warp that cardboard um, i just let it dry and eventually I could kind of bend it back into shape and it wasn't a huge deal. Again, if that bothers you, you could, after they're dry, put them under some very heavy books for a while and they'll just straighten right out. I have done that in the past. So here I am cutting off the corners of the fabric because I do plan to fold them over and then I'm gonna cut off the excess. This is really janky. Look what I did. <laughs> oh well. Um, I do have fabric scissors. I was too lazy to pull them out. I didn't care that much. And these scissors work very well because they are serrated. Now this is where it gets really messy. I put a bead of glue along the edge and just kind of smooshed the fabric into it, trying to make sure that I was pulling it tight. And I got glue all, all over my fingers. Plus this bottle tends to like splurt. And so sometimes I had, you can see it squishing out there. And I tried to kind of deal with that the best that I could, but my fingers were absolutely covered in glue. I'm running my finger, you'll see me do that along the edge, just to make sure that everything is kind of smoothed. Look at all that extra glue. <laughs> This just gives me anxiety watching it. I hate being messy like that. So I put the extra glue there. You can see I'm holding my bottle because I'm just absolutely covered in glue. Um, now, I do not make you watch me do this on the other one. I did that off camera and let this one dry. So there's the other one done. And now here again, I decided, oh yeah, I probably should have done this before I did anything else, cleaning it off with a, a wet wipe, just a baby wipe, and it got some of the gunk of travel off of it because you know it was a mailer. So here I am, and I put that binding on there, and while I love it, it was too thick. I didn't want a binding quite that thick. And so I pulled out the only color options that I had chosen that were in the thickness I wanted. And so now here I am comparing colors. Like if I decide to change out the rings, will the green or the purple work better with whatever color rings I choose. And so, oh, there's a kitten. Um, so I decided that the green looked better with either option. And now that green, after I did all that work, that light green was too thin to wrap around. I needed more of a seam allowance. So here I am trying to see if I could unwrap it. And I was like, no, that's just gonna look weird. So I'm boring and I end up going with white because it was the right 
uh, width that I needed. Now I'm telling you I'm going to sew it off camera and boy am I glad that I did that. It is messy looking. I decided to embrace that because it was kind of, you know, difficult to do. I bent my needle. I have never bent a sewing needle before and I bent it on this project. <laughs> so now here I am. I'm trying to find the holes because now I need to repunch the holes and it was really difficult actually to find them. And so here I am, I figured the best way I could stick my pen like into the indentation and actually get where the holes were again. So that's what I, what I ended up doing. Repunch all of these again. It's not really meant to punch through all of this. So it, I did need some cleanup on the other side, I believe. Not a lot, just a little bit. Um, so you see me doing that right here. But I was impressed that it went through the cardboard, the fabric and a layer of glue. So now here I am putting them in there. And I had originally wanted to cover the edges of the cardboard bits when I did it, but I realized I didn't want to sew through the cardboard because that definitely would not have worked. So I decided let's hot glue it because hot glue is going to work on that plasticky bubble mailer. You just have to make sure and keep your holes lined up. Um, you'll notice that the outside cover is a little rounded and the inside is not. That irritates me, but you know, live and learn. So if you're doing this, I would round those two outside corners of each of the inside covers. So learn from my mistakes. <laughs> now my hot glue looked very brown. I was trying to line it up there uh, because I had left it on way too long. Do not do like me. That was not safe. So anyway, here I am. I was going to go ahead and put these in here so that I could see if it was gonna work like I wanted. Again, I'm trying to get them to hug the spine on the outside so I have, you know, space, more space on the inside. And that meant that I did intentionally bend. You can see there's a bend on the inside edges of that cardboard, and it makes it so it doesn't quite close yet. So when we do the pages, we'll talk about that a little more, but it is what it is right now. Now I'm dealing with the back cover, which has where the mailer label was. And I decide to just cover it kind of haphazardly with some gesso. And you're going to see me cut in and out here because I do several layers and I dry it off camera. Now, a word of warning, two words of warning. When you do this, if you do this, the bubble mailer is plastic. Keep your heat tool moving. Otherwise, you will bubble the plastic. And I accidentally did that on, on this. So you can see it on the that left hand flower there near my fingers. Um, also, second word of warning, because it is a bubble mailer, it wasn't dry. That's what that was all about. I was frustrated because the bubbles are kind of indented on this side. The gesso can get in there and then it doesn't dry. It dries on top, but not underneath. And so when I was writing that A there, I reached a pocket where it was dry on top. It felt dry to the touch, but it wasn't dry underneath. So also be careful about that. It honestly wouldn't hurt to just set it aside and let it dry for a couple hours. So I found this awesome quote that I just put on the back of it. It's by Albert Einstein, and I just varied my handwriting a little bit to give it a little style. I don't love my handwriting, but again, the name of the game is imperfection. We are just going with it. So I knew what I wanted to write. I'm starting with middle letters in case you're wondering why there's an R. I was a little frustrated that, again, the bubble mailer texture meant that it didn't stamp extremely well, but I found out off camera that I could kind of color it in with a black Posca marker, and it mostly looked okay. I Again, imperfection. We're embracing it. So again, working out from the center of the word, Ernie, and I'm lazy. I don't clean my stamps. Sorry, people, I'm not a, a much of a stamper. So I just stamp them off on that extra paper. My word on the bottom is a little more difficult to center because it has an eye in it. And you have to watch the widths of your letters if you are doing that and stamping. Um, you might want to test it on a piece of paper before you do this. I just kind of went for it because I was ready to be done with this by now. <laughs> so there we go. I'm going to show you. I'm not going to make you sit here while I color all of this in because it was a little bit fiddly. Now, if you look close, you can see where I colored because the Posca is shiny, whereas the ink that you saw I used stays, stay, stays on so it wouldn't come off. But um, it worked and we're about at the end here. Now, this would have been 18 hours long if I included the pages. So I will have a second part coming up soon to show you how I do the pages on the inside. You see I added a little strip in there just for some fun and I will see you guys again soon. Let me know what you think. Will you try this yourself? Bye!